All right, here in Camera Basics, we are going to take care of obviously some simple things, but there are also some pretty important things as well in this section. So what we're going to be doing in here is going to be looking at what a mirrorless camera is, talk about the sensor size, a few of the primary controls, and we're going to get one setting set right away, and that is the file format, one of the most important settings in the camera. So first up, Canon R7 is a mirrorless camera with interchangeable lenses, so we've got lots of different great lenses we can put on there. Inside each of the lenses is going to be an aperture, and this aperture is something that can change in size to various different sizes on most lenses. There are a couple lenses that are exceptions. We're not going to go into that right now. All right, so light is trying to get into the image sensor, but it needs to get past the shutter, which has a first curtain and a second curtain. Now, this being a mirrorless camera where you can just pick it up and view from it means that this shutter needs to be opened up. This way you can see on the back of the camera through the monitor or through the electronic viewfinder what the camera is pointed at. Now, when it comes time to take a photo, there's a lot of actions that the shutter needs to take. It first needs to close, and this is so the sensor can prepare to capture an image. It then opens up and captures your image for a short period of time, and then closes with the second shutter. And this is kind of the standard mechanical operation of the camera. There are some different options when it comes to the shutter control, and we'll talk about that in section four on the drive settings and shutter options in there. So that's the basic options uh, for how the shutter works. Now, different shutter speeds are available and they're gonna be used for stopping action or the motion of your moving of the camera. There's a lot of great reasons. We're not going to it all right here. That's a general photography class. All right, so those are your basic components of a mirrorless camera. Now, a very important attribute to any camera these days is the sensor and the size of the sensor is what we're talking about here in particular. And what the R7 uses is what's considered to be kind of a medium large size. It's not really small, it's not really large, it's somewhere in the middle. Now the most common and famous, if you will, of the sensor sizes is the one based off of 35 millimeter film. For a number of reasons, 35 millimeter film happened to be the most popular choice of film over many, many decades of that usage. And there are sensors that are that exact size and we call them full frame sensors. This uses something a little bit smaller. It is an APS-C sensor. These are normally a 1.5 crop factor. This camera is actually a 1.6 crop factor. It's close enough that we don't make a lot of fuss about it, but there is a subtle difference between them on slight difference with other manufacturers. Now, turning the camera on, well, it's pretty simple. You turn it on. Uh, there is a little video camera symbol which puts the camera into a special movie mode and the menus change, the options change, the viewfinder changes a little bit. So it's still photos turned on and movie photos in the movie on section. When you do turn the camera on, the image sensor has a little protective cover in front of it that tries to shake off any dust. And this is the sensor cleaning ability of the camera. And this is something that's generally good to leave turned on. Dust in front of your sensor or on your sensor is gonna cause light, you're gonna block light from hitting your sensor and it's gonna cause little black spots. And that is a major problem and that may happen long-term in the future. But in general, the camera does a very good job at keeping most of the little nuisance dust off the sensor. All right, the shutter release, obviously for taking photos. Main dial, this is our main go-to dial on the camera. It's often changing the shutter speed, but it could change a lot of other things depending on what mode your camera is in. So it's just kind of the main dial on all Canon cameras. Now this has a focus control ring on it on the particular lens that I have pictured and the particular lens that I have here. We have a zooming ring and this focus control ring. Now what that means is that you can have this set to focus. So if you want to manually focus, that is how you're gonna to be to focus. And you can change it if you want over to controlling something else. And you get to go into the custom menu to decide what that is. It could be the shutter speed, the aperture, the ISO, or something else. Uh, so this is a feature on a lot of the new Canon lenses. Some of them may not have this feature, but most of them do. On the back of your camera, 
you have a quick control dial, which is often used for controlling the aperture in the manual mode, but it can control multiple different things. The multi-controller usually controls where the focusing point is, but once again, this is something that can be used for a variety of purposes. The cross keys on the back of the camera are great for navigating the menu system, but they can also be used for moving the focus point around. When you want to select a particular feature, you can use the set button. It's kind of like the return key on a computer where you can fully engage whatever setting that you have highlighted. Now the camera does have a very capable touch screen on it, and so this can be used for playback or shooting. You can be turning features on and off. You can use it in the menu system. We'll talk about it as we continue going forward in the class. On the shutter release, when you press halfway down, that activates the metering system and the autofocus system. In addition to that, it wakes the camera up should the camera be asleep, which is something that it does fairly frequently. When you leave it on for a period of time, the camera wants to shut down to prevent battery drain. And so how quickly it shuts down, that's something that we'll be able to control later on in the class. Now, if you happen to be lost in some sort of menu and you're not quite sure on how to get out because you just want to get out of there, well, the shortcut to getting out of them is just press halfway down on the shutter release. It returns the camera to the shooting mode and allows you to shoot photos as quickly as possible. And then, of course, pressing down all the way to take your photo. Now, under custom function number three, customizing the buttons, you can go in and you can customize various features. And one of the buttons you can customize is the shutter release. For instance, if you prefer to do something called back button autofocus, which I'll talk about in the focus section on this class, you can turn off the focus engagement by pressing halfway down. That way you can press another button or that your camera just doesn't focus when you press halfway down. And there's some great reasons for having that turned on or turned off, which we'll discuss a little bit later. But that is something that can be found in custom function number three in the menu system. Now on this camera is a multi-function button. This has been quite common on many of the more recent Canon cameras. And as the name implies, there is a multitude of functions that this button controls. Canon used to have just one ISO button, but I think they thought, well, there's a lot of other features that people want to have quick access to. So they've limited it to just five. So you can select up to five different options in here, and it's going to allow you to go through this. So by pressing the function button, you can then use the quick control dial on the back of the camera to choose which function you want to adjust. And then you will use the main dial to actually make a change in that particular setting. And so that way you can very quickly go from one of these settings to the next and then actually change that particular setting in there. And so this is something that can be customized by going into the customize buttons, the manual function button and the dial function and you can start altering this. And this is something we will talk more about in the buttons and dial section later on, and I'll show you how to customize it and make it a little bit more practical for most people. All right, so one of the most important settings, maybe it is the most important setting in the camera, is the file format. What type of file are you recording from this camera? Now, if you want the best image quality possible, if you want the most capability, you'll want to record in RAW. This is the original data that comes off the sensor. It's a large proprietary file. It's going to be 14 bits. It's got a large dynamic range on it, and it's going to give you the most capability down the road for editing. On the other hand, we have JPEGs, which are extremely common and all photographers work with in distributing and emailing. And so it's a type of file that is very, very handy to work with but it doesn't contain the full tonal range that the raw image has. And so it really depends on what your priorities are. I shoot raw for most of my serious photography where I know I want to edit and get the most out of the images. In other cases, I'm shooting through lots of images. If I'm shooting a sporting event and I know how the images are going to be used and they're not um, going to be gigantic posters that I'm doing all sorts of crazy things with in post-production uh, software, I'm probably going to be shooting in JPEG images. It just takes up less file space on the memory cards and on my hard drives uh, and is perfectly good for many of the applications that I have. Now, new on this camera, fairly new to this series of cameras, is the Hyph option. This is kind of a new and improved JPEG. As you can see, it's a 10-bit file versus an 8-bit, which means 
you're getting a little bit more tonal range on it. Not everyone is into Hyph images right now, so you might want to make sure that your workflow is set up. Whoever you're sharing images with is ready to work with Hyph images before you change this over from JPEG to Hyph. But it looks like to me, uh, Hyph is better than JPEG in every way possible with the exception of how common it is on various computers and how people are using it. Now to put the camera in the Hyph mode, you need to go into shooting menu number two and turn on the HDR shooting HDR PQ. When you do that, it suddenly switches the cameras over to JPEG. It won't actually say JPEG or Hyph when you go into this image quality setting in shooting number one. So if you do go into shooting menu number one, image quality, you're gonna have a number of options. First up, the RAW. As I mentioned before, it's the full tonal range. It's the way to get the best image quality from the camera possible. It's a 32 megapixel image, full resolution. You're gonna end up with a fairly large file size and you're gonna need appropriate software to read this image. Free software comes from Canon. There are lots of other manufacturers like Adobe, Capture One, and many more that make software that can read this as well. So Canon isn't your only option, of course. Now, Canon also makes a compact RAW file. And in this case, they have taken steps to reduce the file size without harming image quality. Now, later on in this class, when we get to, I believe, section 12, uh, going into the menu settings, I'm going to show you some examples of standard RAW versus com compact RAW. And just to cut to the chase, the compact RAW is fantastic, and I recommend it. Now, when it comes to the JPEG or Hyph images, we're going to have the basic options between large, medium, and small. And this has to do with the resolution. So uh, the largest is the full resolution of the camera, but compressed into a JPEG file. So the file size is quite a bit smaller. Now, large and medium and small also have different compression options. So you can choose how much that file is compressed, which will result in slightly different file sizes. And so most people like to shoot in the largest size possible and they will size it down on their computer. There are people who don't have computers that are shooting with a digital camera that want to shoot a smaller file size. And so this is not something that a lot of people will use in here. It's more of a special case scenario. Uh, you can shoot in a small file size that gets the resolution very far down. If you know you need something straight out of camera, that's a small file size that transfers very quickly, uh, then there are those options in here. But generally speaking, I think people are going to be shooting in the RAW. I think the compact RAW is a great option for most people or the large JPEG. And if anything other than that, you just really want to be sure that, yes, you only want to be shooting in that limited mode. So. All of that is done in shooting menu number one under image quality. So let me go ahead and take a look at this and show you just a few things about what's going on in here. So let's go ahead and hit the menu button and you can navigate left and right over here. Uh, real quick tip, you can hit info to jump around tab from one tab to the next. We want the first tab and the first page and the first item. And that is image quality right now. So I can turn the main dial on the camera to select different RAW options. I can choose no RAW standard or the compact RAW, which I kind of like, or I can use the, let's see what happens with this dial here. So this dial uses and adjusts the JPEG size, or you can use the cross keys back here. And so you can shoot RAW and JPEG at the same time, not a lot of reason to do this unless you need RAW and JPEG at exactly the same time. Once you have a RAW, you can make a JPEG later on. But there are some cases where you want to keep the RAWs and somebody else needs the JPEGs right away. And that's a good time for shooting both at the same time. So for right now, I'm going to set both up because sometimes there are features that don't turn on when you select one of them or the other. So I'm just going to select both of them for going through this class. And so the way it's set up right now, whenever I shoot a picture, it's going to save a com compact RAW as well as a large JPEG as well. Um, and so that's just what we'll, I'll have it set up as we go through the remainder of this class. But get your camera set up now to the way you want it to shoot. So there we go, folks. Those are a few camera basics. And I would say that we're all ready to start getting serious on this camera because the next three sections in particular are really important sections for the operation of this camera. We'll see you there.